Welcome back to the Basic Beginners FreeCAD course. I will help you understand the process of modeling real world objects into FreeCAD, along with practical exercises to help you on the way. In the previous chapter, we learned that a profile is used with an operation to yield different forms. Understanding these operations provide clues when examining simple real world objects and what is needed to construct them. Many objects can be created just by using a handful of operations, the pad, pocket, revolve, and groove. If we take two profiles and imagine them in silhouette, and they appear as rectangular when viewed from the side, another that is complex when viewed from the top, tackling the object involves sketching the complex profile and using a strewed or pad operation. But when presented with a circular profile when viewed from the top, and a more intricate one from the side, this suggests creating a call to cross section profile and using a revolve operation. Removing such areas as negative space reveals that the underlying form can be first created with an additive operation, followed by additional operations to add or subtract volume from the shape. Building on what we have learned, we will start to introduce more planes and profiles, allowing us to tackle more complex objects and introduce additional operations. Let's start our journey with a simple bowl made from a revolve operation, which we learned about in the previous chapter. So a bowl has a circular profile when viewed from the top and a more complex profile when we view it from the side. So this points to revolving the profile around its axis. But how can we make a square bowl? Our logical steps no longer fit. The profile from the top is no longer circular and our side profile is complex. If we think about what is happening with our round bowl, we are strewing the volume along its circular path. If we could customize this path, we can create different shaped bowls. For that, we need a cross section profile and a path that guides the extrude operation along it. This process is known as a sweep or a pipe operation. Replacing our revolver with a pipe operation, we get an identical result. We just make sure our path is circular and the profile remains the same. The path is created using a sketch, which can be either an open or closed wire. In this case, closed to create a continuous shape. The path can even be an edge of another operation. We are now starting to model upon multiple planes. In this case, the profile will sit on the side plane and the path on the top plane. As the profile touches the center of our revolve, the bottom of the bowl will be closed. Let's apply the same operation to a rounded rectangle. As we can see, we encounter a problem. At the base, the surface starts to intersect itself. To correct the intersection, we need to adjust the position of the profile so it sits at the edge of the path. This way, the tip of the profile will follow the path without creating the intersections. Now we have the correct form, but the base is still open. We can use the same path in an additional operation. In this case, we would use a pad, which creates a solid base. This process demonstrates that an understanding of the tools allows us to break down an object into its components. In this case, a bowl, which is broken down into its base and the sides. We can then get an idea of the operations that it takes to rebuild it. The path doesn't have to be closed. It can be open as well. Let's consider the following two forms to further illustrate the concept. When we examine the start and end of these subjects, they reveal that the profiles remain consistent throughout. This means that the cross section running through the object remains the same shape and size. However, for the subject on the right, looking at it from the side, in silhouette, the form is a rectangle. Makers think that this would be a simple extrude. We would then use an operation on top of that, a simple pocket, to remove the center part. But there is a more efficient way. So if the cross sections are consistent from beginning to end, then we know those cross sections have been extruded along a path, even if it was a straight one. Creating the cross section sketch along with the path and using the additive pipe operation. In our next lesson, we'll have a look at using the sweep or additive pipe as it's known in the part design to put what we've learned into practice. Hope you're enjoying this course and I hope to see you in the next video. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone 
I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.